have found our way It's a brand new day And we'll be making history Are you with me? Won't you stay? We have come so far This is who we are And like the rising sun We have just begun to time we form the chorus lift your voice for those before us we can rely on one another feel the pride let's show So good morning everyone, I'm Lois Takahashi, I'm the director of the USC Price School in Sacramento. And it is my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome you all to the celebration of the Sacramento 2020 and 2021 Master of Public Administration graduates. <laughs> Let me just say that we've experienced all, I think, the disruption, both in good and bad ways, uh, that was wrought by the COVID-19 pandemic. But I think what this has shown me is how resilient, adaptive, and persistent our students, graduates, instructors, and staff are and can be. So thank you all for your hard work, your humor, and your support of one another. It really made a big difference. Uh, this makes today's occasion all the more wonderful because we could be here together in person as cohorts with our family and friends. So before we start the celebration, I'd like to acknowledge a few supporters of and instructors in the MPA program and USC Price in Sacramento. So when I please call your, when I call your name, please stand and wave. Uh, Dr. Juliet Musso here at this table is <laughs> Vice Dean for Academic Affairs for the USC Price School of Public Policy. She'll be speaking to us later. Carol Rush over here at this table. 
is Associate Dean for Student Affairs and Enrollment Management uh, for the USC Price School of Public Policy, and she admitted all of you. So don't forget to thank her on your way out. Uh, Chester Newland, Dr. Chester Newland here at this table, is a globally renowned scholar, teacher, and mentor in public administration and leadership, and a generous donor to our MPA scholarship program. So thank you, Chet, for being here. Dr. Don Hufford, also at this table, sitting next to Chet, is a member of the USC Price in Sacramento Advisory Board, recently retired as the Chief Medical Officer at Western Health Advantage, and he's also a generous donor to our scholarship program. Um, is, uh, I'm looking around to see if people are here. Uh, Robert Ingenito, your favorite beloved instructor of economics, who also happens to be the principal consultant for the California Senate Appropriations Committee, and Genti Drobaniku. Stand up, Genti. Wave at everybody. He is a fantastic instructor for statistics, and he's research manager for the research and statistics unit at the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. It's a very long title. <laughs> Finally, last but not least, let me introduce the staff who have worked behind the scenes to make this event possible, but who also helped you get through the MPA program as painlessly as possible. Dr. Juliet Lee at this table here. She has helped all of our students succeed in the MPA program, and Lydia Thung is somewhere back there who made this wonderful event possible. So thank you, Lydia, for all your hard work. Um, a little later in the program, we're gonna recognize each of our graduates calling you up to the stage where you will have one to two minutes to talk about your experience here. We hope you take this opportunity to share a few thoughts about your experience at USC and reflect on those who supported you to get to where you are today. So no more than two minutes. And I got my phone, so I'll be timing you. Okay, so now I'd like to introduce, again, Carol Rush, Associate Dean of the USC Price School of Public Policy, who will share a few thoughts. Thank you, Carol. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Lois. It's wonderful to be here. I bring greetings from the Price School's main campus in Los Angeles and want to extend my heartfelt congratulations to the 2020 and 2021 graduates. As I just said, I'm thrilled to be here. This is my first in-person event since, for the Price School since COVID began, and I can't think of a better way to celebrate my return to the new normal than to celebrate the accomplishments of the graduates of the USC Price Sacramento Center. You're a very special community of students, faculty, staff, alumni, and supporters, and I always feel there is so much hope for our society when I'm with you. So speaking of alumni, you are now members of the more than 437,000 living alumni in the Trojan family. Congratulations. Yeah. USC alumni can be found in positions of leadership all over the world, with more than half of them living here in California. You are also members of the 20,000 plus Price alumni. As Price alumni, and specifically alumni of the MPA program, you are ready for public service leadership positions and for improving the management of public and nonprofit organizations. Through coursework, projects, and teamwork, you now have a solid understanding of the institutions, legal systems, and values of public service, and appreciation of the roles public, nonprofit, and private organizations play in public decision making. You appreciate different leadership styles, are skillful at working in teams, and know when to be the team leader and when to be the team player. You have strong strong quantitative and analytical skills. I think some of your faculty are right there. You argue your position with data and are aware of the opportunity costs. You know how to make good decisions, especially during times of uncertainty. You've explored some very important topics through electives, including public policy formulation and implementation, collaborative governance, civic engagement, advocacy, political leadership, and more. And through the Capstone Project, you and your teamwork, teammates have gained invaluable experience helping an organization resolve a real-world public management problem. As alumni who spent one or several semesters of your graduate program during a pandemic, you are nimble and have shown amazing creativity, resolve, teamwork, patience, and determination. You're ready to make a difference. My advice to you is to enjoy the next journey. As our society emerges from the pandemic, 
This is a time of opportunity and new ways of thinking. Our society will be looking to you, our public service leaders, for support, guidance, and innovation. Be open to ideas and positions that you haven't thought of before. We don't exactly know what work is going to look like, but we know it will be different. Use the confidence you've gained from your MPA experience to stretch yourself for that opportunity that sounds intriguing. And as you move on, please remember our Trojan family. We will be bringing in a class of approximately 20 new MPA students here in the fall, and we will be graduating a class next year as we will into the future. Um, please keep in touch with us, especially Lois, Juliet, and Lydia, and let us know when there are jobs or internships available in your organization, when your organization might benefit from our capstone project, or if you are interested in mentoring a student or providing advice to groups of students. We also welcome your referral of outstanding candid candidates for the MPA. And finally, keep us in touch of your accomplishments and milestones. Our social media team enjoys promoting our alumni through our multiple social media channels, and we all look forward to staying in touch with you. So with that, I close. Congratulations on your graduation, and fight on. Thank you, Kara, for those remarks. Those, we always have to remember why we did this and where we're going to go next. Um, but before we go there next, um, I'm so thrilled to introduce to you our keynote speaker, Mona Pascal Rogers. And for those of you who don't know Mona, which I don't know if there's anybody in this room that doesn't know Mona, um, but now you will. Uh, so Mona Pascal Rogers serves at, as head of California Public Policy for Facebook, where she's responsible for managing relationships with policymakers throughout the state, and I can imagine that's been a kind of an interesting job of the past few months, uh, especially. Uh, but prior to that, uh, Mona's served a long career in public service, uh, serving as appointment secretary in the office of Governors Gavin Newsom and Edmund G. Brown Jr., where she was responsible for helping the governors build their administrations by recruiting top candidates uh, to serve the state. In 2009, she served as chief of staff to Governor, uh, sorry, California Lieutenant Governor John Garamendi, and then she was um, uh, appointed as acting lieutenant governor after Garamendi was elected to Congress. This marked the first time a woman, Asian Pacific Islander, or Filipina America served in this role. And I think that's still the case, isn't it? Yes, so thank you for that service, Mona. Um, Mona is most proud of her work mentoring California's youth to become more active in their communities. She uh, has founded the Asian Pacific Youth Leadership Project of California, excuse me, an organization dedicated to boosting Asian Pacific Islander youth involvement in California policy. She continues her commitment to mentorship and serves as the president of the California Women Lead. Are you still president of California Women Lead? Okay, president of the Women Lead. And then she just stepped down as uh, chair of or president of the California Asian Pacific Islander Legislative Caucus Institute. So please join me in welcoming Mona Pascal Rogers. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Come on now. Good morning, Sunday morning. So congratulations to everyone. I, you know, I, um, I've been out of college a thousand years, um, and I remember talking to my siblings, uh, my brother and sister-in-law, who got their masters from USC, um, also a few moons ago, and I said, God, what do I want to share? And they're like, Keep it short, sister. Nobody wants to hear. And I was like, Wow. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, so, so here's what I have to say to you all. Wow. We've been through um, some crazy times, but you all have made it through. You all have, have pivoted in a way that, not, that I know I never have. You started a program, many of you started a program all on Zoom. You didn't get to talk with each other, collaborate at 11 o'clock or midnight at some restaurant, um, like I think many of you had hoped to do, but you did it. Was it challenging? Yes. Megan says yes, right? But you did it. And I think that for all the Zoom calls where you were frozen or you said we didn't hear you or could you say that again you were speaking over me or you know just uh, wanting to to turn off the video um, I want to congratulate you 
because this test of the last year and a half has made you stronger. You may not realize it yet, but um, it was a game changer. There was unrest in our communities in our state at a time where people are, haven't always felt like they're appreciated or part of a community. We've been at a time where people have felt like, what the heck does my local state federal government do for me? Do I, do I need them? Do I need them? You are the ones who are reshaping opinions. You are the ones who are going to help us as we rebuild as a small community, as a city, state, and nation. You are the ones that we are turning to to say we're going to pivot and we're going to do this together. Because if we don't, brothers and sisters, if we don't, it will not be a cool ride, as my nephew has told me. So I want to share with you a couple lessons that I've learned in the, I feel like, a thousand years that I've been working, but it's only been 38. Um, lessons that I've learned about pivoting. So I worked in the Clinton White House during impeachment. You know, I was in the political affairs department at a time when no one wanted to talk to the president. When you're on the political team, there are four, four regions, and you're sitting at, in meetings, and the president says to you, well, there's all these campaign things going on. Don't they want me like they did for the you know, coordinated campaign or congressional members or whatnot? And the first thing I learned about respect and truth was when I went to my boss, Craig Smith, and I said, could you tell him that nobody in the West wants him? And he said, no, that's your job. And I thought, I went, I thought, okay. And on the call, when he said, don't they want me in Seattle? I thought, how do I say this in a way that doesn't come off as, you know, dismissive, defensive, or lack of respect? And I said, sir, with respect, they would rather see someone else. Silence. But there are other places that we can use your help. So that was an opportunity because regardless of how you felt at the time about the situation, and I had my own feelings, um, I knew that I was talking to a boss with, along with colleagues who were watching how I handled myself. I knew that, that if I didn't, if I set a different tone, others would follow. And we all, after we were on that call, because it was kind of, it was a little tense, we all got together and we said, man, that was the worst thing in life that we're ever gonna do. Worst, worst thing in life. And in my heart I went, I bet you there's worse, but I didn't say that. So never forget, as you are giving news to people, as you are shaping the tone of a meeting, as you are thinking about how, how to let you know, the leader of the, your household or the leader of the free world know the truth, speak the truth, speak it with respect, and be honest. The other one was more recent, working for Jerry Brown. How many people in this room have met Jerry Brown? Okay, then you know how I'm, okay, right? Brilliant man. His, he was someone, I think it was my, the best job I've ever had. He did something for my family, and I didn't tell him straight away, but I told him after a few months of working with him, I said, you know, he says, why the heck are you working for me anyway? And I thought, oh, God, I knew this conversation was going to happen at some point. And I said, well, let me tell you, I didn't actually think that I was going to work for your administration. Wasn't top of my list. I had just gotten married, second marriage. I was like, I am not messing this up. We are, I'm not going to do politics. But I remembered when I got the call from Nancy McFadden what I thought. I thought, I remembered in the 1970s, my dad and my uncle sitting around a table like this, helping each other prepare for interviews. 
Because for the first time, there was a governor who was inviting more people of color and women to serve in management positions and appoint them to, you know, to the bench. And I remember as a kid who was kind of ticked that, you know, they're like, why are you at the kitchen table? Because we need to eat and you're, you know, you're, you're in the way. I remembered in my heart how excited they were to feel a part of something, to feel like they had an opportunity. Only one guy got an appointment, but everybody was happy. And while none of those men are with us today, I still every day in my heart keep that enthusiasm and that joy, always. So when the governor would say, Mona, I want you to find good people for these appointments, not the same 20 that have been applying for appointments for the last 30 years. I thought, well, how do I do that? And he said, get out. Get out of this building and talk to people. Talk to people who are doing great things. Talk to teachers. Talk to business workers. Talk to people who are, are, are doing great things in their community and then ask them to serve. But more importantly, try to find those people who aren't expecting the call and ask them to serve. And I'm so proud of that because we were able to, in our Nancy Drew work, because you could never do anything with Jerry Brown without knowing the history, like 30 years, what, what it was like when he was here the first time, we found boards and commissions that hadn't had a woman or a person of color since the 80s. What? And he said, well, what are you going to do about it? And so we went out and we found more people. And we worked. We partnered with USC to do a lot of these appointment workshops to open up opportunities and bring people in. Find people. Find people that you don't necessarily always agree with. Talk to them and get them to serve. Why is that important? Because Jerry would say, really, Mona, you're going to put all these people who all agree and have the same opinion at the same board? You're crazy. Spice it up. He says, there's nothing, nothing like spirited conversation. Megan knows she probably remembers hearing it over and over again. So talk to people. Figure out why you don't agree with them. But listen, respectfully, listen. And then because the toughest job sometimes for me, I'm the oldest of five in a Filipino family, I really don't like to hear my siblings say they disagree with me. I mean, growing up, I was like, I'm the boss, and here's how it's going to go. And in the real world, brothers and sisters, what happens when you actually listen to people who don't necessarily agree and who don't and have different experiences than you? We all grow. We all grow. So I want to talk to you about another friend of mine who recently did something extraordinary. I can't say your name because I didn't ask permission, but I'm going to say everything else, and then you can do your Nancy Drew Hardy Boys work. So she's fifth generation Asian Pacific Islander. And her nephew, who is a renowned physician in Southern California, um, multiple times during the pandemic was, you know, working 24-7, worried about bringing anything home to his family, his friends, to anyone. And multiple times as he was walking in and out of work, was told to go back to his country that he was not welcome here and that he had brought the virus to the United States. And he didn't say anything all those, all those times until he spoke to my friend. And he said, our grand, great-grandparents came here for him, great-great, and built the railroads, and had been here ever since. And the thing that hurt him the most was that no one, no one stood up for him. Others who heard that he worked with, who heard these screams and hollers and accusations, didn't stand up for him. So what happens? People are, to say it, they're very upset. They, people are hurt. People feel like they don't belong, and then people don't feel like their neighbor, their person sitting at the table next to them, even care to stand up for them. What does that do to a community? What does that do to a person? So she said, well, there's a lot of hate going on, and I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to pivot, and I'm pivoting to hope. So she is. She's been in the entertainment industry 
for many years. She called her good friend, the director of Crazy Rich Asians, and said, I need your help. Uh, we have two weeks. I want to do a PSA before Asian Pacific Heritage Month, and I want, I want joy. I want to pivot to joy because while there's hate and while there's anger, we are proud. We have to be proud. And in that moment, what she did to me when she told me that after I cried a little bit, I thought, well, I'm going to do the same darn thing. And so one of the things that we did, a couple folks at, at Facebook, we decided to have conversations and put them on Facebook Live. And I, of course, of course, I didn't want to be the person in front of the camera, but somehow they must have taken a, 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 you know, a vote on let's get the oldest person at Facebook to do it. So I, I did it, and one of the things that came out of that is we've been talking to our policy partners and their stories and how it always hasn't been, as my niece Tia says, it hasn't always been rainbows and unicorns. In fact, the road there to where they're at when you speak to our attorney general isn't, is tough. The road includes sacrifice. The road includes sometimes standing alone. But at the end of the day, our pivot to joy was to educate. Our pivot was to not necessarily just be the one, like, cause like I hate being the one in the front of the camera, but putting somebody else in front of the camera. Putting somebody else in front of, you know, in, in front of an audience. And you, for me, that was the way I transitioned. And that's the way I want to transition to you. Because I think that um, I was telling a few friends this morning, people that have, like myself, that have worked on multiple presidential campaigns and multiple, worked for multiple elected officials, we're worried. We're worried about the direction of, 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 of leadership. But we know that the baton that we've had for many years and was given to us has to be passed. And I passed mine when I left the governor's office and I, and, and I, I wanna pass another one that I have to you all today. I wanna challenge you to do a couple of things. I want you to take a deep breath. Yeah, you've made it through Zoom calls, you've made it through really not getting to bond, you've, but you've done it. You have pursued this while working full time. You have turned on your screen for work, you've taken a break, and you turned on your screen for school. And that has to be hard in your living room, in your office, in your backyard. I know I had a hard time with it. But you, you are the ones who will pivot our conversations. You are the ones who are going to bring people back together. You are the ones who have heard each other and know that there are more opinions and more thoughts and more brainstorming to do. You, you will do that. Uh, one of the things that someone said to me, a graduate student said to me uh, about a month ago, he says, well, you know, I've been, I, um, I'm getting my master's, he's back east, in, in uh, public policy, and I really think, don't you think uh, going to the private sector is a sellout? And I was, I'm like, hi, I was in public policy for a long time, went to Facebook last year, and I said, that's a really interesting opinion. And I said, but here's what I'll tell you. After 36 years, I think one of the things that I can, my pivot, was to bring to a company my views on how to deal with different issues that come, that, that come to us. I think that my views as a Filipina, third generation, first of five, kind of outspoken, bossy, they may say, has a place there. And I will challenge you to think about the doors that will open for you along the way. Don't close your eyes to what's here Keep them open because the door that opens here or there that you were not expecting could be where you were supposed to be all along. And if it's not the one for you, think about one of your colleagues here or ones that you work with who might do a, use that opportunity as a great experience. That might be their path. Don't think just about yourself. Think about all, all of us together. How do we help each other? How do we help each other to pivot and to move forward? 
You got this. You've shown that you've got this. But here's the last thing. Keep a mentor or many mentors. Keep hope as a part of your, your thoughts all the time. Make a difference and think about the team. Uh, someone said to me the other day, what are you going to do now? <laughs> it's my nephew. What are you going to do now, Auntie? You're, you're, you're so old. And I went, listen, 59 is not that bad, whatever. I know when you're 19 it's bad, but it's really not. And I said, here's what I will tell you. The conversations, think about all the conversations that you've had, Delon, now till you reached my age and beyond. Think about if you were willing to listen. Think about if you were willing to help. Think about if you were willing to share. And I know we are in good shape because this program has brought out that in all of you. You've always had it. You always will. But it, is, it has brought you up to a new level. So brothers and sisters, keep in touch, especially those who are just meeting for the first time in person. Still get together. Still help each other. And please, still reach out. The secret to success is when you help, make sure that those people that you help go past you. Enjoy your adventure. Thank you. So USC swag, of course. So wherever you go, just make sure you show that to everybody. Oh, I will. Thank I you. Will. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mona. Um, so if you didn't know Mona before, uh, that was a really good example of Mona, authentic, inspiring, and forward-looking. So thank you, Mona, very much for those inspiring words. Um, I am now uh, delighted to officially congratulate our 20 and 20, 2020 and 2021 graduates on the completion of their Master of Public Administration degrees. So congratulations, officially. <laughs> I know some of you got congratulated in LA, but it's kind of not really the same. Um, so um, it's a great accomplishment, as Mona just mentioned, and Carol just mentioned. Uh, so we're now going to recognize each of the 2020 and 2021 graduates. Uh, so we do things a little differently here. As some of you know, uh, each of our graduates has an opportunity to speak for two minutes. So Juliet's looking at you. Um, we'll announce your name, and just so you don't get kind of worried that we're doing this kind of randomly, it's an alphabetical order. Uh, you'll be given one to two minutes to speak at this podium. You're going to come up this way. I've been trying to train you, so hopefully you come up this way. You talk. You go down that way. You go pick up your diploma cover. You have your picture taken. And then there's a small gift bag for you, too, that Lydia has put together for you. So um, I will now ask Juliet Lee to, she will be speaking with her portable microphone. So you'll hear a voice in the wilderness speaking. And she'll call your name, and you'll come up, OK? So it's my pleasure to introduce the class of 2020, Christian Beltran. Lois, a heads up would have been nice. <laughs> no, but thank you so much, um, USC and the staff and faculty for putting this together for us. I think. You know, when I, when I think about the opportunity to celebrate with my family and celebrate with my girlfriend and celebrate with all of, you know, my fellow cohort, uh, you know, this is a, a great opportunity for us to come and celebrate together all of our collective success and um, our completion of our master's program. So it's really special for us. But ultimately, I'll make it short. Um, I think that the USC program was such a great opportunity for me to grow, um, not only as a professional but and prepare myself as a professional, but also as an opportunity to really think about the core values of myself and how to grow those core values in public service. The MPA program really instilled those and helped me grow in those. And I think it was just a great program that also connected me with such a great cohort of individuals that are invested in public service. And um, it's, a, it's one thing to you know, strive to be a public servant, but to surround yourself with people that are in that mission with you is such an important part of growing and uh, also uh, expanding your professional network. And it's really a great opportunity, and I'm so glad that I got to embark on that journey with everyone. Um, but I just want to do a special shout out to, to, to my girlfriend for being there every step of the way and helping me adjust as we, uh, in our last semester, had to go to a work from home status. And then, of course, my parents, my mom and dad, uh, who 
My mom is a, a special education teacher for LAUSD and has always shown me the importance of public service and you know, helping young kids grow. And then my dad, who started his career in the post office at age, I believe, 19, and uh, you know, has shown me, you know, it, it's not always so much about the, this, the, the, the money or anything, but it's about making sure that you're a good manager. He's a manager now at the post office, and making sure that you reflect on what's important, the people that work for you, and making sure that they are getting what they need to be successful and helping other individuals grow with you. Um, I think that's one of the, the, the core values that got instilled in me. So that's all I wanted to say. It's great to see all of you here. I see a lot of familiar faces even in the 2021 cohort. Um, but I, I, I am really appreciative of this program, so thank you. Our next uh, graduate is Genesis Coronado. Well, where's Christian? Way to kick it off. He said he didn't prepare himself, but <laughs> he sure had some talking points under his leave. Um, but I just want to say real quickly, I moved to Sacramento for this program, mainly for the flexibility to be able to work full time and to be able to do classes and not go crazy right every evening. Little did I know that I would be in a class with so many like-minded individuals willing to make a change, really trying to impact their communities, you know, in their workspace where they were or beyond that. And to me, that is really the highlight of this program is making those long-standing relationships with the cohort that I was, that I am eternally grateful to be part of. And USC just tends to always do a good job at that. So that's all I have to say. Love everyone. Fight on. All right, Conrad Crump. Good morning, everyone. Good to see y'all. Why don't you give yourselves a round of applause? I know it's Sunday morning, so I'm going to spare you all. I'm not going to take you to church. I only got two minutes. But, um, you know, first and foremost, before I begin speaking, I want to do a land acknowledgement and acknowledge that I'm standing on Nisanon land, um, Miwok people's land of the indigenous individuals that lived in this region. And I would be remiss if I did not at least acknowledge the people um, that came before me. Um, and so I want to acknowledge that. Um, wow. And for me, I was told I'd never graduate high school. Um, I was told I would never be the person to go on to college. I found myself at Sacramento Job Corps trying to figure out what I wanted to do in my life, digging ditches as a cement mason. Um, and now, you know, as a first generation college student, um, you know, I received my bachelor's at Berkeley and my master's from USC. And um, it's just a dream come true. Um, you know, I think about the levels in our life that we all ascend or aspire to ascend to, um, and I liken it to hiking. And if anyone has gone out and they've been hiking, as you go higher and higher, the air gets thinner and thinner, and it gets harder to breathe. Um, as you continue to go higher and higher, you have to get acclimated to the level that you're at in order to breathe and actually function. And I think about sometimes in my life where I've been like, how come I'm not reaching my highest potential? How come I'm not at that level that I wanna be at? How come I'm not at the top of this proverbial mountain? And I found that, you know, maybe God, the universe is telling me, you need to get acclimated to this level that you're at. Because if I shoot you straight to the top, you won't be able to breathe. You won't be able to sustain it. You might lose it all. You might have it and then crash and burn just like someone who's never had money before and they become rich or someone who's immediately become famous and they just lose it all. So I think about all those things. Um, you know, I'll just say this really quickly as the only African-American student in my cohort. Um, there were times where, you know, I thought to myself, like, you know, Will I be accepted? Um, you know, will my viewpoints and the, and the things that I view and, and talk about and my perspective and the way I view the world through these lenses, will they be acknowledged and will folks agree with me? And I found that everyone in my cohort was super cool, super loving, super welcoming. 
and I love all of you all for that. Um, lastly, I'll just say this to my kids. You all have been my inspiration. You all have truly inspired me to be the best that I can be, to be the best father, to be the best student, to be the best human possible, and I thank you for that. I also thank my parents for being there with me through this roller coaster of a journey. <laughs> um, I also thank my girlfriend, Jessica, who's been really super supportive throughout this whole process. Um, I thank all my friends and family, all the cohort um, folks from both classes, 2020 and 2021, all of the professors, too. It, I don't have enough time to name you all by name, but you all have been such an inspiration to me, and I continue to just take this journey and, and the love that you've shown me as I continue to climb higher up this mountain. Thank you. Raul Gonzalez. Good morning, I'm Raul. <clears throat> I have a lot to say, I'll, I will hurry, doctor. Um, I have to say thank you to all USC staff. Uh, I, I had the honor of attending the ceremony in Los Angeles, and obviously it's such a huge ceremony, we don't have time to meet and greet with our professors and our fellow students. I can't thank you enough for throwing this for all of us today close because this is amazing that we get to be here with everyone and, and recognize each and every one of you all as well and actually hang out with our cohort members. So thank you all to Lois, to Juliet. I have to give a special shout out, if you don't mind, uh, Robert, Professor Ingenito, please stand for me, sir. <laughs> thank you very much. I had uh, my final course at uh, in uh, USC and down in uh, LA, uh, nightmare of a class that <laughs> I struggled with, and uh, Dr. Ingenito uh, tutored and mentored me for two straight weeks. Thank you very much, Robert. I will never, I can't repay you enough. Thank you for that. I ended up graduating at the top grade because of your mentorship. Thank you. Uh, I, I the, the cohort here at USC, lifelong friends that, I, that we've all created. I mean, Conrad, you know, Noah, Rico, even Rico's husband, Clint. I can go on and on. I will love you all forever, eternally. Great memories with every one of you. I also had a kind of a unique situation where I took a six month break, one, one of the semesters. I worked for the state and there was a promotional exam. I had to take a break from, from the cohort. Did well in the uh, exam, promoted, love and, love and life with work. That also allowed me the unique position to continue on and meet and greet the next cohort. Uh, 2021 20, cohort, got to know every one of you all as well. Uh, I'm thankful that happened because it was a win-win. I mean, I got to know, you know, Alejandro, Arnie, where you at, Quinn, way back there. Great friends in both cohorts, very thankful that it went that way for me. Um, also, um, I, I have to mention, like Conrad, by the way, Conrad and I have the distinction of being the two oldest farts in the, in the cohort, by the way, right? We're, we're the old guys. Right? <laughs> we also happen to be, if I'm not mistaken, when we started anyway, the only fathers, the only parents in the cohort, right? And just like Conrad, give a little shout out to his beautiful daughters. I'm gonna shout out my son, Landon. My inspiration as well. And uh, I'm sure just like Conrad's daughters, the sacrifice he had to make to be in this cohort, uh, so did Landon with, you know, we, we had baseball games that I've missed, you know, special events that I've missed, and luckily my, my boy understood it was for a greater good. So, love you, buddy. <laughs> my wife, uh, I'm, I'm moving as quick as I can here, Lois. <laughs> my wife, uh, <laughs> Lindsay, please stand, babe, please stand. I have to do this to my wife. We married in 2019, which by the way, a whole bunch of our cohort members, uh, we were so fortunate to have them attend. Thank you all for being there for our special day, September 1, 2019. Since that day, Lindsay and I have still not had a honeymoon. I'm sorry, babe. <laughs> and the reason is, aside from this uh, in, you know, very intense program, Lindsay happens to be a naval officer. 
She's in the Navy Reserves. She is a full-time registered nurse here in Sacramento at UC Davis as well. And she's in a master's program at UAB in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. And she's graduating in August. So with her hectic schedule, my hectic schedule, we have not had a honeymoon. Hoping to change that real soon. We're going to Hawaii next week. Can't wait. <laughs> Very impressed with everyone, every one of the students in this cohort. Ms. Rogers, Ms. Mona, you mentioned you're worried about our leadership. I cannot say how much I disagree. And you did mention more comments after the fact, but after meeting everyone here, getting to know everyone, and your abilities, and I mean, even Christian Beltran, the way you know, he opened up this, the speeches today. That, that boy is going places, and every one of our classmates are as well. He's the youngest one. He had the, the distinction of being the youngest, the baby of the cohort, by the way. And, and look at the level of that boy speaking. Amazing. Uh, I think our future is bright uh, after meeting everyone here. So that, that's really it. Lastly, my mom couldn't be here today. Uh, very humble up, upbringing. My mom's single mother. Uh, three boys. I was the eldest. My fire was my son, of course, my wife, but also my desire to, to be that role model for my, my brothers and now my, and now my boy. So, um, son, you're going to be a Trojan next. Stand by. <laughs> Fight on, everyone. Thank you. All right, next, Lee Kraljev. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to be back in person with my classmates and the staff and faculty here, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to complete this program. It, I had very different expectations going into this, uh, and it really exceeded my expectations in two ways. First, going into this, I thought I would take some classes, get some skills, add it to my resume, move on. Great. Uh, but really, from the very beginning, the environment that the faculty created in class, it totally changed my relationship to education. I felt like a partner in my learning. Uh, I felt like the faculty was excited to be there. They respected us and, and were excited to learn from us and our experiences. And it really just reinvigorated my, my love for academia, so much so that I'm working towards becoming a professor myself and teaching a class, and I'm co-teaching a course next semester at Los Rios. Thank you. <laughs> so that I can hopefully create the same environment for my students that you all created for me. So thank you so much for that. Uh, and second, of course, as my classmates have mentioned, the, the most impactful thing for me were my classmates, my cohort, and the relationships that we built. Uh, I remember during our orientation, uh, Lois and Juliet and all the staff mentioned the most important thing, you're going to become best friends with everyone, and, and you'll all you'll depend on each other. And I kind of rolled my eyes a little bit, like, oh, I'm sure they're great, but we're just classmates. OK. But damn it, they were right. From the first class, we were getting drinks together. And in the last two years, we've gone to each other's weddings. We've celebrated births and milestones and really developed friendships that will last, last a lifetime. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's just been an incredible experience. And I'm, I'm so grateful for the relationships and the experience that I was able to have with my classmates. Uh, my capstone team, Noah, Rico, Conrad, I'm missing the heen. But it was really just amazing even transitioning to, to virtual. Um, and of course, thank you so much to my family and my partner Jackson for all the love and support and giving me the foundation throughout my whole life to pursue my passions. So thank you all so much. Rico Petrino. Hello, everybody. Um, wow, I... Uh, didn't expect to be so emotional today. This has been really amazing. Um, you know, the word that comes to mind to describe my experience at USC is resiliency. Um, uh, my dad's not here with me today. I wish he was, but uh, I lost him during my program. I lost my brother, and my classmates rallied, you know? and. Uh, this experience has been beyond anything I could describe to anyone. Lee's right. 
we're family, you know, Trojan family. Um, I didn't, I was with her. I did not believe it when I got here. I thought we were, you know, the hype was too good to be true, but um, uh, thank you to the faculty. Uh, I, I agree, like, I have never felt more um, respected by people that I idolize and admire um, and, and seen by them. Um, so thank you. Uh, thank you to my husband for being there through thick and thin. Um, you know, we got married <laughs> first, first semester, right out the gates, you know, two marriages uh, in our cohort. It was pretty amazing. Um, I, I think what I want to uh, leave on today is a quote by Pema Chodron, who's a, um, a Buddhist philosopher. Um, she says, only to the degree that we expose ourselves over and over to annihilation can that which is indestructible in us be found. And um, I think through this program, I've surely found my indestructible self. So thank you all very much and bye right on. Noah Starr. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Noah. Um, so for me, my, my career is a lot about relationships. Um, I work for the state treasurer, and um, as much as this program has helped me uh, through the faculty and the, the classes gain new knowledge, um, for me, I think the biggest value that I've been able to take away from this program has been the relationships that I've made. Um, I can't tell you how many times just in the course of my work, even just on Thursday, you know, someone, I was introducing myself and mentioned this program and someone said, oh, I'm a 2011 MPA alum. Um, and, you know, those kind of connections I think are really, really important, um, as well as all the connections I've made during the actual class uh, course of the program. Um, had a really great time. It's a little strange to celebrate something that happened over a year ago uh, now, but I really wanted to just come back and uh, reconnect with all the people that I met. So uh, thanks, everyone, and uh, fight on. Uh, Hillary Thompson. good on that thing. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I was trying to think about what I was going to say after listening to what everybody else was saying, and I just want to say that I echo just about everybody else's sentiments, but also I keep on telling my friends when I talk about this program that education is 33% what you learn in the books and 66% the connections and the relationships that you make. And I feel so privileged to have been able to meet everybody in my cohort and to work with you and see that you too have the same work ethic that I do and you want to make California or the world a better place to live in for everybody. And I just, I'm just so grateful that everybody has the same thoughts and I know that I will be working with many of you in the future in different positions and different roles that I have and knowing that I'm going to keep running into USC MPA alumni and we'll have the same values and we speak the same language and we are all working together to make the state a better place. Um, I also want to thank my parents for your support. Um, my father is a journalist and he often spoke um, about the need to ensure that people know the truth and the need to be moral and upright in everything that we do and just seeing him really work with the facts throughout his very, very long career has always been an inspiration for me and um, it's really taught me that um, public service and doing what you can to support the people is so important, whether you're working for a newspaper or working for the government. Um, so yeah, that's about all I have to say really. Um, just thank you and um, I'm so glad we can see each other again today and fight on. Here for the class of 2020.
we'll start with the class of 2021, Alejandro Cabrera. Oh man, it's hard to follow these very articulate speakers. Um, English is my second language, so I struggle a little bit. But uh, I just want to say that I'm, I'm very uh, thankful to be here. Um, very thankful for the staff at uh, USC that really helped me feel welcome. Um, at USC, uh, grateful to have met very uh, inspirational people on the program, um, a lot of good friends. Um, and uh, I don't really have a lot, a lot, a lot of, uh, to add to this, but um, mainly just the experience that I had and, and, and uh, just the, so many wonderful people that I've met on this program. Um, uh, I think like many of my colleagues here and my classmates, um, I grew up in Mexico, well, not like many of them, I grew up in Mexico, but like many of my colleagues and my classmates, um, like Conrad mentioned, I was uh, labeled as uh, someone that was very not likely to succeed, right? Um, I grew up in Mexico, a small municipality, roughly about 20,000 people. Um, and uh, they, they say it's not a good thing to carry a chip on your shoulder, but um, in my case, it helped me. So I remember very uh, early on, middle school, no, elementary school, um, uh, one of my class uh, teachers, I told my mom that um, I should drop out of school. Um, and um, I was failing the grade, it was sixth grade. And uh, this teacher told my mom, you know, your kids should really consider finding a trade or a construction job. Um, she's not gonna make it in middle school, right? And um, I, I don't know what it was, but I remember at that time, it didn't feel right. Um, I knew I was very um, young, and my mom, who was here with me, single mom, um, really a hard worker, um, I, something didn't feel right. So I decided that I was going to use that, that fire that she put on my shoulder to carry me on. As I moved from Mexico at the age of 17, um, and it was that fire that helped me, you know, move at the age of 17, learn a whole new language. Um, Serve in the military, along with the other great colleagues that I have here. Um, did a deployment to Afghanistan, did a deployment to Ecuador. I got my bachelor's degree and now my master's. And I'm really proud to say that that file helped help me now tell my mom that that professor was wrong. And I really want to thank everyone. <laughs> and the staff and my colleagues and my classmates for being here. And thank you so much. Mama, gracias por todo lo que has hecho por mí. Brian King San Juan. Um, thank you, everyone. I uh, want to start by thanking my family. Uh, for supporting me uh, over these last crazy 18 months. Um, thank you to my partner who pushed me to apply to the program uh, and finished uh, business school herself, all remote. Um, so on paper, uh, this program did exactly what it was supposed to do. I came out of it with a great new job, um, with a, an amazing network, a great cohort. Um, but more than that, what I really appreciated about, especially our Sacramento professors, is the collaborative environment that you all pushed us towards, um, and really making sure that we were able to you know, question the status quo, and it, at least speaking for myself, made me come out at the back end, really not only reflecting on the work I've done the last 10 years, but being able to um, you know, understand why I was doing it and push myself to be better. And silver lining of COVID is I gotta take some courses down in LA remotely. Um, and I know Dr. Rush is here, but the LA uh, courses, I don't think, compared to the Sacramento ones. So, so thank you guys, um, seriously. Uh, just like the one-on-one -on -one environment, the mentorship that we received through our courses, I thought was bar none. So thank you, um, congratulations to my classmates. Lois and team, thank you for having this for us. I didn't expect to have something this nice put together at the end of this, so yeah, exactly. So thank you, fight on. Carney King. Hello, 
Hello. Uh, I just want to quickly thank my parents, Dave and Julie, that are here with me. Uh, they've been very supportive over the years. Uh, I want to thank the incredibly patient professors uh, and their lenient due dates. It really helped me get through the program. Uh, especially you, Genty. I promise my blog posts are coming. I'll be here shortly. Uh, my cohort, I couldn't have done it without you. Um, but you made a great network. Um, you know, I had a lot of interviews, and as soon as I'd start talking to them, they'd say, you know, Brian King has already reached out to us. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, Jennifer Liu in the back, texting me every week, reminding me to do the homework. Uh, you're all really great to me. Uh, so thank you, everyone. I'm proud to be a Trojan, and uh, fight on. Jennifer Liu Java. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, the faculty. Thank you very much for all of the um, support and knowledge um, throughout this whole entire uh, two years, just about. Um, I also want to thank my parents and Nick back there for all the support and trying to push me to always um, just, just push me to be better than I was before. I also want to thank the, um, my fellow cohort members. Uh, they really supported me through the last, especially year and a half of my life. So I just definitely wanted to uh, give a shout out to them. And to echo Mona's point, um, the biggest thing that USC Price has given me was the diversity of opinions of my fellow classmates. And then uh, they've also provided um, just the lessons and the different um, opinions. So thank you very much. And, um, Fight on. Thank you. Jenny Nguyen. Good morning, everyone. Um, first, thank you, Lois and team, for putting all this together. This is the first, first big event that we're all together, so really grateful for you. Um, just also wanted to thank my parents, partner Jacob, who said he didn't want to be called out, but, you know, he's been there uh, through thick and thin, um, and also my friends and colleagues here. Um, I guess my biggest takeaway and just, you know, the driver to get this, um, to get the MPA and to be in public service is that as a refugee, I relied on all public assistance programs, CalFresh, Medi-Cal, WIC, and I grew up really wanting to give back and to help uplift the communities that I was a part of. And so um, just really thankful for, you know, being a part of the cohort, um, the collaboration, um, just working together and just to, you know, reaching so that we could just make a difference um, in society. So um, I'm very proud to be a Trojan since I was a UCLA Bruin. It's kind of, you know, hard to reconcile that, but um, <laughs> fight on. Thank you. Megan Saba. Got a timer, so I won't go over. Um, so thank you so much, um, Lydia and the Sacramento staff for putting this event together. Um, 2020 brought a new phrase into our vernacular, you're on mute. Um, <laughs> I, I, um, that that uh, phrase meant a lot to me because for a long time I didn't have a voice. Um, I'm someone that had a lot of, a shoot, this is really emotional. <laughs> Um, I'm someone that had a lot of opinions and ideas, but I didn't quite know how to express them. I came to the program during a time um, in my life where I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, so I did what lots of people in their late 20s do. I applied to grad school. And um, I, I found the two most valuable years of my life um, were in this program. Um, I really want to quickly thank my family, my mom and my brother, and especially my partner, Brian, um, who was so supportive and um, stood with me during that time. Um, I, I, uh, I really want to say that 
This program is so incredibly valuable and special, especially here in Sacramento. Um, for those of you that don't know, I've, I think I've told most of you. Um, so I have a learning disability. Um, I barely graduated high school. Um, I didn't, I was pretty shocked I ended up going to college and finishing it. Uh, my mom stayed up with me late nights, helping me learn how to read and write, um, which I did at very late ages. Um, and this program helped me find confidence, purpose, a community, um, and it helped me find my voice, so I'm not on mute anymore. Um, and I'm so proud to be a Trojan, and I wanna, I wanna, from the bottom of my heart, thank the faculty and my classmates, because you guys helped me through interviews, you helped me through the schoolwork, um, you helped me get my dream job, so thank you. Um, thank you, everybody, fight on. Sandy Say Chow. very big stage, but it still feels really far when you're walking from the other side. <laughs> um, but first of all, I really wanted to thank the USC faculty for giving us a celebration. I've actually been celebrating for two months now. Uh, <laughs> I did go to the LA uh, ceremony and have just been partying it up since, but I um, really want to thank you guys for being here and for giving us this opportunity to celebrate with my cohort. Um, really want to thank my mom for instilling the sense of community um, in me and the willingness to serve. Um, I actually did not think I would get very far or pursue my master's um, I'm first generation. My mom my parents were immigrants and field workers, so it, um, it's really just finally hitting me that I am the first in my family with a master's, which is amazing. But um, I also want to thank my siblings for raising me. They're all like 10 plus years older than me, so every time mom and dad was away, it was, it was them, and I really thank them for being here. Nina and Tina, thank you so much. Um, and... <laughs> Also, thank you to my cohort for being an inspiration and to always be available when I needed to vent or needed help with anything. Um, so thank you and fight on. Miriam Valdez. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Um, I made up a mnemonic. I, ma I, I made up faculty, friends, family, and fight on. And um, the first kind of group I want to thank is faculty because in the very beginning, you know, I had a job and I was happy. And Lois was not kidding when you said you go through transformational change during the program. So faculty, um, every single one of you really... Um, guided me through the journey, so thank you. Um, friends, I made so many friends, class of 2020 and 21. Um, I think being together during this really crazy time, I couldn't have had, the, I had the best people around me supporting, and um, you guys are amazing, so thank you. Um, my family, my partner's here, Alec, he's lovely. He's like my biggest hype man. Um, and my family, my mom and dad, and my brother and my sister, and oh, I'm so emotional because I'm just so happy. Like, I'm happy we made it and I had the best experience. So just thank you to all of you and fight on. Quinn Walker. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, I woke up this morning definitely not expecting to, to cry, uh, but my gosh, like what an incredible group of people. And I think that's, I was just sitting there thinking like this perspective of, wow, these are humans that are gonna be in my life forever as alumni in this program. And what an incredible group of people. And just so grateful to be a part of this. Um, it feels a little bit surreal for me because I'm still, in the middle of my last class, I actually am writing a paper on Senate Bill 519 this evening, <laughs> and so I'm like a little stressed out about it, but no, it's, I'm in a celebratory mood for sure. 
Um, really, uh, you know, my mom is the, the reason that I'm here, raised by a really strong uh, woman, a single mom who served the state of California for 39 years in public service. And um, yeah, thank you. And if it wasn't, you know, if it wasn't for her leadership and her being a role model for me, yeah, I, I absolutely wouldn't be where I am today. And uh, this is just so cool. Thank you, USC, for putting this on. I'm a, I'm a big Kings fan. I already got yelled at for being on the court down there. And this is, <laughs> this is just really cool. And also, you know, I went to a small um, state school in New Hampshire. It was a Division three. I never had a college sports team root for, which is why I'm so stoked to be an alumni of USC now. And so go Trojans, and, and thank you, everybody. Yeah. I did expect to cry, so been through this before. Um, thank you all for sharing your reflections on being here with us. I mean, we always get a lot of um, more energy to go forward with our programs and our services because of you. So now um, let's congratulate again the 20 and 21 graduates of Master of Public Administration. And uh, I'd like to now introduce Dr. Julia Musso, our Vice Dean of Academic Affairs for the USC Price School of Public Policy, who will provide a few thoughts. So, Julia Musso. Good morning, Trojans. The past 18 months have tested our nation and its communities, and we have emerged with a better understanding of our resilience, but also of our sources of vulnerability. I think the most important source of resilience for all of us has been our renewed sense of community and the importance of our social, social relations that actually emerged ironically during a time when we were asked to maintain physical distance. And I think about, about every time I mention the term social distancing to our interim dean, Dana Goldman, he would always correct me, he's a health, you know, health uh, researcher, he would always correct me and say, Juliet, we don't need to be socially distant, just physically distant. And I think that's true. And <clears throat> I think that importance of community came out so clearly in everything that um, both the 2020 and 21 classes had to say about one another. But it's also evident that it was there for you um, in your family and your friends. And so I would like to take this moment collectively to thank all of those sources of support for our two cohorts and ask everyone who was a family member, friend, daughter, sister, nephew, or in any other way supported the cohort of 2020 or 21 to stand up. Please, everyone stand up. You're not standing, come on. <laughs> all right, let's give this wonderful community a round of applause. Thank you, thank you for your support. So, on the, we, we also face sources, challenges of vulnerability moving forward, challenges that you will be required to face in your professional careers. And I think the, these challenges posed by the pandemic, by our recognition of increasing sources of risk and increasing political polarization, they reinforce the importance of professionalized public servants that have a strong sense of values and a moral compass. And I thank all of you for going into this profession. Um, I'm thinking, I too have a mnemonic, <laughs> the three C's. And what I think the qualities that brought you to us that we recognized in you when we accepted you, we didn't give you this, you brought it. And I hope that we helped shape the way that you will use it are your sources of courage, your sense of curiosity, and the creativity that you bring to making social change. And I wanna just speak briefly about each of those. So on courage, I think about my um, professor, Aaron Woldofsky, who is one of the founders of the field of public policy. And on, um, he wrote a book called um, Speaking Truth to Power. And there's a chapter in it called The Once and Future School of Public Policy, in which he states that the primary purpose of a school of public policy is to endure students to disappointment without discouraging them entirely. And I, I always think about this because I had a student who came back to me once, I think 
think I'd been teaching for maybe four or five years. She came back, she said, Juliet, I see what you mean. I said, I have no idea. I have no recollection of what I may have said to you. She said, what you said about the brick wall. And I said, please remind me. She said, you said that trying to make change in politics is like hitting your head repeatedly against a brick wall. And I thought, wow, I really was junior because I would never say that to someone now. She said, it's so true. It's so hard. But she was out there trying to make a difference. And I think that all of you, what I recognize in you from having you in my class is that you really do have the courage to go out and keep battling sources of resistance, sources of political complexity, and all of the difficulties that you confront in trying to make a difference in the world. On curiosity, I'm going to quote another mentor of mine, Professor Bob Biller, who was one of our deans and a longtime colleague. And he said, define yourself not by, uh, not, uh, define yourself not by who you are, but what you can find out. And so I think what we, we saw in you when you came to our program was a sense of curiosity, a sense of trying to seek solutions, understand problems, a willingness to do the research, to go out and find the evidence that you need to, to um, actually come to judgment about difficult public problems. And so I think um, being willing and able to go out and find evidence that will quell these increasing forces of, of polarization and misinformation on both sides of the political um, spectrum, I think is really important because it's only by bringing evidence to tough public problems that we will actually be able to solve them. And then finally, I see creativity in you. And I think it's an underappreciated quality in public service. And I think there's a particular spark of creativity that can come when you bring research to practice. When you actually go out and take the skills that we have provided in learning how to do research, how to apply analytics, but then you actually have to make them work in the real world, and that takes creativity. And I'm going to borrow a term from another of my colleagues, Chet Newland, Professor Chet Newland, who talks about pracademics which is really when you marry academics and practice. And that's really the creative spark that I think can make positive social change. And so these, source, these sources of incredible professional talent, curiosity, the curiosity to seek solutions, the creativity to marry research and practice in a way that actually can be game-changing, that's my sports metaphor. And, and the courage to keep working to make a difference, that's what's going to make you the leaders of tomorrow. So congratulations, classes of 2020 and 21, and fight on. Oh, sorry, fight on. That was really great have our vice dean talk more often. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Musso, for those um, very uh, inspirational words. Um, before we uh, close out everything, I would like to recognize uh, Vidu Shekhar, who's one of our, he's like, what? So uh, he's one of our uh, Sacramento Advisory Board members uh, and uh, senior manager at Workday. Just wave. Just, yeah, thank you. All right, so this closes our official uh, celebration. I want to congratulate again all the cohorts, 2020, uh, 2021. So graduates, what I'd like you to do is come over here to this side. That's your right, I believe. And we're going to take class photos because we do that as a kind of tradition. And it's nice to see everybody together. So I want you all to come over here. Now would be nice. And then for people at the table, um, we have bag lunches, so one representative from your party should go over to the table over there and pick up the bag with the students. Sorry, you're not students anymore. You're graduates with the alumni's name on it. See, none of you are even paying attention to what I just said. So the alumni's name is going to be on the, the bag, so one person from the table should go over there and get the bag with all your lunches in it. You are welcome to sit here in this room. I'm sure it's like a 5,000 degrees out there right now. I'm sure it's nice, but you are welcome to either sit here and have your lunch with your party or go out and enjoy the day in Doko. Um, so yeah, the graduates should be going over there. 
see how much power I had in classrooms? Graduates, go over there. Go over there. Go over there. And I want to thank you all. And to echo uh, Julia Musso, I want to thank all of you who support your, your alumni for coming today and for being a part of the Trojan family. Thank you so much. You've tamed the voices in your head. You've put your courage to the test. Lay all your doubts to rest. Your mind is clearer than before. Your heart is full and wanting more. Your future's at the Yeah. Hey! 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 Hey